All right, I'm going to go over the readiness review. First on number one, uh, the horizontal transformations all come from inside the type of function. This, is, this happens to be a parabola. Could be the stuff inside a cosine or sine or something like that. And everything inside works backwards. So for times something, you would think it stretch it by four. It actually shrinks it by four. Minus three, we, you would think it move it to the negative side. It moves it to the plus side. And it goes reverse of order of operations. So the minus three happens first. So it would be uh, three units right but to, to the plus side, to the right, yes. And then the four will compress it. toward the y-axis by a factor of 4. So, where any point on it, you would move it up, uh, to one-fourth as far from the y-axis as it originally was. The vertical transformations are anything outside of the square where there's a minus and a 2 and a 5, and they all happen in the right order as you expect. So the, min the multiplication stuff would happen first, and then the addition would happen second. So I'll take care of the minus first, which this is happens vertically, and the minus would flip it over x-axis, just flipping it this way, it's vertical, the 2 would uh, stretch uh, by a factor of 2 times 2 from the x-axis. Again, so it all works off the x-axis in this case. y-axis, horizontal, x-axis vertical. So anything that's one away from the x-axis would be two away from the x-axis. Anything two away from the x-axis would be four away. And third, plus five moves it up five. You may use technology to check your work. Uh, this is a quadratic. You can try to factor it. That's one way to do it. You can complete the square, which is a messy way to do it. Or you can use the shortcut for a quadratic, which is the quadratic formula, minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all over 2a. And in this case, the a equals 2. The b equals negative 3. And the C equals a negative 6. So we have the opposite of B, which would be 3, plus or minus the square root. Minus 3 squared is 9. Minus 4 times, okay, let's just do 4 times A times C and then change the sign. 4 times A is 8. 8 times 6 is 48. And that's a negative 6, so that's negative 48, and change the sign, so it's plus 48, all over 2 times a, which is 4. So, without simplifying, we just have uh, 3 plus or minus the square root of 57, all divided by 4. And that's the two x-intercepts. That, that far in x, 0, and the other way, 0. Their points. Log to power conversion. So if you have some base to a power, let's say uh, a, and it equals c, convert it to a, an e equation or to a log would be a log base b to what power? And that's my translation of log. To what power do I take b to get C, and the answer, the power is A. And so logs are powers.
And so when you're multiplying two things, like the log in some base B of A times C, let's say, then it stays in that base, but it would be the power that you would take V2 to get A, and the power you take V2 to get C. So this is a power, and this is a power, and you add powers when you're multiplying two things. Similar idea if you have a log in some base B of A divided by C, then the power you take uh, B2 to get A, and the power you take B2 to get C, and when you're dividing, you subtract powers. 2 to the 5th over 2 to the 3rd, you would subtract 3 from 5 and get 2 squared. If you had 2 to the 5th times 2 to the 3rd, you would uh, add the powers 2 to the 8th. Exponent rule. If you had a log of some base B of A to some power C, uh, whenever you have like 2 to the uh, 5 to the 3, you multiply the powers because you get 2 to the 5th multiplied 3 times, 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 5th, 2 to the 5th, which is 2 to the 15th, and you add them because you're multiplying. It's actually the multiplication here. So to what power do I take B to get A? That's this part, and then that's to a power C, and so you multiply by C. You multiply the power by the power. And the change of base rule, that says if you don't like the base that you're in, like B of A, and you want to change it to something more convenient, like maybe E or 10 that you have on your calculator, you go to that base. So you can make this log base C, which could be 10 or E, typically for, for your calculator, of the argument A over the log of the base, log of the base in base C. Okay, so if we use those to simplify this into one log expression, first of all, we want to make these all logs, so let's move the 2 up as a power of the x using this rule. The power can come down or it can go back up. So this would be log base 3 of 5 minus log base 3 of x squared plus log base 3 of x plus 2. That can't be split up, that x plus 2. But we're not trying to put it up, split it up. We're putting it together. These are all base 3, so that's good. So now we have the log base 3 of 5. When it's subtract, you divide so that the when you've got subtraction, it goes to division. Division goes to subtraction. So you're going to divide by x squared. And then you got addition. So addition goes to multiplication times x plus 2. And some people multiplied this out a little bit, but that's all I expected right there. So now we're going to use these, the whatever we need, some logs possibly, to solve the bottom ones here. So, first, this is 3 times something, so we're just going to get rid of the 3, divide, dividing both sides by 2, so we have x to the third equals 3 into 9 is 3. A lot of 3's in this problem. And to undo a power of 3, we do cube root. And we get x equals the cube root of 3. Pretty simple. Don't need to do any logs whatsoever. Oh, but now x is in a power. We may have to do log. 
but I would divide by the 3 first, and we'd have 2, uh, two to the x equals, divide by 3, is 3. I want to get the x down, so I'm going to do my very first thing. A power equation changes to a log. Up here, a power equation changes to a log. It would be log. The base is b, which is 2. And the power goes over in the c, c position, over, uh, over on the end, x, and a 3. So that would be an OK answer. You could also type into your calculator using the change of base rule and do this in base 10 or base e. You would have log base 10, which is understood, of 3 over log of 2. Or you could do ln3 over ln2 and get a decimal approximation. But that's all I wanted you to be able to do. This one. Several people have problems with this one. And uh, I saw folks do one method. Uh, I'll do, I'll, so I might have to do this one twice. So I might have to pull out another piece of paper here. One way to do this one. That's kind of small there, so I'm going to go over here. Um, 3 times 5 to the x equals 2 to the x plus 2. Now, some people got, got rid of the plus 2 by rewriting this side as 2 to the x times 2 to the 2. When you add the powers, you actually multiply. And so that's just 4. And so they decided to divide both sides by 2 to the x. And divide both sides by a 3. And they had uh, 5 to the x over 2 to the x equals um, 4 over 3. And this is the same as 5 halves to the x because they have the same power on them. And then they wrote that as a log equation. Um, log with the base of 5 halves, or 2.5, of 4 thirds equals x. And then you could type in log base 10, or base e of 4 thirds over log that by using the change of base rule. And get a decimal approximation. Now, Another way to do this one would be to is just to take the log of both sides. In other words, this is supposed to be a number. This is supposed to be the same number. They're equal. And so if we said, to what power do I take 10 to get this whole thing? It's the same power as I take uh, 10 to get this whole thing. Now you could have put ln here also. You would get the same answer if you were careful. All right. What can we do with this? Well, this is a product, and there's a power on this, but only on that. So this is a product, so you can split this log, and I don't have to keep writing 10. If I stay base 10, it's understood base 10 if I don't write anything. So it would be log of 3. Multiplying, the rule says, plus log of 5 to the x equals log of 2 to the x plus 2. This, uh, the power comes down, power rule, the power comes down time, so we have log 3 plus um, x 
log 5 equals x plus 2 times log 2. And you could distribute this log 2 times both parts there. And so I'm going to rewrite that right here. That's the log 2 times x plus 2 times log 2. You could put that back up and call it log 4 if you want it, or log of 2 squared, which is 4. But anyway, looking at this and looking at this, this is just a number. That's just a number. So I got some x's and some x's. So I can put those on the same side by subtracting, say, that from this. So I'd have x log 5 minus x log 2, subtracting that from both sides. And subtract log 3 from both sides. And I would have, if I put that up, that'd be log 4 minus log 3. And the log of 4 of 2, well, I'm going to factor an x out of here. Let me do this first. Okay, now, with this, I just need to solve for x, so I divide by this quantity, divide by that, and that would be fine for an answer. But it doesn't look like the answer we had for this top up here, you can still see that. So I'm going to show you how that this can look like that. If we're subtracting, that would be the same as the log. Subtraction goes into division, log of 4 thirds in base 10. We're in base 10 there. And this would turn into the log of 5 halves in base 10. But you undoing the, the change of base rule, Working that backwards, that would would be could be the log of uh, this would be the base five halves of four thirds, and now I'm back to the same answer I got there. So I could do this was a a simpler method up here, but this works, and you could have done this all on ln too. Okay. Lots of ways to do in that one. Let's go to the trig uh, 154 class. Let's see what we can do here. Pi over 6. So I'm hoping that you remember from trig, the unit circle takes two pi's to get all the way around. So halfway around in radians is pi. So pi radians is the same as 180 degrees. So pi over 2 is half of 180 or 90. And if you do pi over 6, you've got to take 180 divided by 6, which is 30. 45 is pi over 4. 180 divided by 4. If you divide by 3, you got 60. So you got 30, 45, 60, 90. Those are those special triangles, and we learned all the sines, cosines, secants, tangents, everything of those. Pi over 6, 30 degrees. 135, that's 45 plus 45 plus 45. So that's pi over 4 three times, three forty-fives. Um, if you go to the 30 degree, and that's kind of small there, but you've got this triangle, and if we're making it the unit circle, that's one, and if you remember the ratios, that's a half, and that's the square root of three over two, so the cosine is on the unit circle is the x direction. So that's square root of 3 over 2. 
the sine is the y direction, one half. The tangent is sine over cosine, so it's one over the square root of three. Secant's the reciprocal of cosine, so that's two over the square root of three. Cosecant's the reciprocal of sine, that's two over one. And this is the reciprocal of tangent, square root of three over one. 135 is a 45 degree triangle, which is one, one over the square root of two, and one over the square root of two on a 45, but it's over in this quadrant, so that the x is negative. So that would be negative, and this would be positive. So the cosine is negative one over the square root of two. The sine is positive one over the square root of two. The tangent, this would be the same numbers, opposite over adjacent, but the adjacent's negative at 135, so it's negative 1. Secant's reciprocal of this. Reciprocal of that. And the reciprocal of negative 1 is still negative 1. Where's the cos and a half? Well, the cosine would be a half. The x value would be a half up there. That's pi over 3. Or 60 degrees. Or it could be down here. It could be at negative 60 or 300. And negative pi over 3 or uh, 5 pi over 3. But just need to pick one for this exercise. So if I use the one in the first quadrant, then the sine would be the long side, square root of 3 over 2. And the tangent is sine over cosine. The 2's cancel. It would be square root of 3 over 1 or just square root of 3. Reciprocal is 2. Reciprocal is 2 over the square root of 3. And the reciprocal, that's 1 over the square root of 3. Square root of 2 over 2 is another way of saying 1 over the square root of 2. If you multiply square root of 2 on top and bottom, you'll get this, n minus. So if the sine is that, the sine is the y value. So we have to be at a 45 either down there or there. I'll pick this one, the easy one, negative 45 degrees. Negative pi over 4. And so the cosine would be positive, so that's square root of 2 over 2, or 1 over the square root of 2, either one of those answers. Tangent, these are both the same, but 1's minus, so it's minus 1. The secant would be the square root of 2. The sine, reciprocal of the sine would be minus square root of 2, and the reciprocal of the tangent, cot the tangent would be minus 1. Where is the tangent undefined? Tangent is sine over cosine. So it would be wherever cosine is 0. The x value is 0 at pi over 2 or negative pi over 2 or plenty of other places. I'm just going to use pi over 2 or 90 degrees. And so the, the sine here is the y value. It's 1. The cosine is 0. And so the secant, the 1 over 0, is undefined. The 1 over 1 is 1. And undefined reciprocal is the reciprocal of 1 over 0, which is 0 over 1. And finally, where is cosecant negative 2? I don't know. That would be where sine is negative 1 half. Sine is negative 1 half down here at negative pi, o, negative pi over 3, a 6, negative 30 degrees. That's one place. I'll just use that. So that's uh, negative pi over 6, and if I'm there, the cosine is this long side, which is the square root of 3 over 2, and so the tangent is sine over cosine, negative 1 over the square root of 3, 
and the reciprocal of this is 2 over the square root of 3, and the reciprocal of that is negative square root of 3. Sine squared plus quotient squared. That's the Pythagorean theorem. That's 1. That squared plus that squared is 1 on the unit circle. The cosine of two angles added is the cosine of the first cosine of the second minus sine of the first sine of the second. If this was minus, this would be plus, but I only had plus there, so you should have minus there. Cosine of 2x is, there's three formulas on that. There's uh, cosine squared x minus sine squared x, because 2x is the same as x plus x, and so this would be x plus x. It's cosine squared and sine squared, because it would be x, cosine x, sine x, which is sine squared. And you could change these around to 2 cosine squared x minus 1 or 1 minus 2 sine squared x using identities like this. 1 minus sine squared, 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared x. So you could replace cosine squared with 1 minus sine squared and come up with that answer. And you could also do replace the then the sine squared with 1 minus cosine squared and come up with that formula. So that's what this is. The sine of two angles added is the sine of the first, cosine of the second, same sine, plus uh, cosine of the first, sine of the second. And sine of 2x that would be putting x here and x here, so that would be the sine of x, cosine of x, plus sine of x, cosine of x. We get 2 sine x, cosine x. Some basic trig identities. How do you solve things like these? All right. Well, there's some angle where the sine is a half. We did that right up here in the very first one, 30 degrees. But there's more than one place. The sine is a half here at 30 and there. We're supposed to be doing this in, um, so that's uh, 30 and 150. We should be doing this in radians for this class. <coughs> so this is pi over 6, or it could have been pi over 6 plus 2 pi there, so all the way around the circle and back to that spot, or around the circle twice into that spot, or three times, or any multiple of 2 pi. Any multiple of 2 pi. And that's, some teachers use k, some use something else, I don't know, but multiples of 2 pi. M's an integer. There's also this other set of answers here, which are 5 pi over 6 plus multiples of 2 pi. That's what theta would be, but that was 2x. So to get rid of the 2, we'd have to divide both sides, everything on both sides, by 2. So this would be pi over 12 plus k or m or whatever times pi, the twos cancel. So there's one set of answers for x. The other set of answers are 5 pi divided by 2, which is 5 pi, oh, pi, five pi divided by 6. Divided by 2 is 5 pi divided by 12. Two, m2 two pi is divided by 2 is m pi. So we've got these two sets of answers, infinite number of two sets of answers. Here we have cosine x tangent squared x over sine x <coughs> uh, 
time and 1 over cosine x. Pull out sine x over cosine x, which is tangent, so this would cancel one of the tangents. And we'd have cosine x times tangent x. Tangent is sine over cosine, so this would be cosine x times sine x over cosine x. Cosines cancel, we get sine x. Now, some people might have done this. Cosine x times tangent, which is sine, and it's squared, x over cosine x, all over sine x, and 1 over cosine x. And I saw some people putting <coughs> this cosine multiplying numerator, or oh, this cosine cancels. This one you can multiply by cosine x and cosine x. Oh, this would this is squared, so this one would cancel this, and this would cancel that other one. This cancels one of the cosines. This one would end up here, canceling the other one, and so we'd have sine squared x over sine x, which is sine x, because this cancels one of the sines. All right, secant x equals 2. Secant is 1 over cosine x. So if I multiply both sides by cosine x, I get 1 equals 2 cosine x. If I divide by 2, I get cosine x equals a half. Let's see, when is cosine x equal to a half? So if I look at the unit circle, half in the x, so that would be here or there. So that's pi over 6. And down here is negative pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6. And a lot of you did 5 pi over 6, that's fine. I'll just do plus or minus pi over 6. But a lot of you, many of you forgot to say, well, okay, there's that one, plus 2 pi plus 2 pi, plus 2 pi, and this one, plus 2 pi, plus 2 pi, plus multiples of 2 pi. This says the, the cosine, can't read it now, so I'm going to cosine inverse of 1 half is x. So the inverse, or arc cosine, as some of you were taught, means, okay, this is the angle, and this is the ratio. This is basically saying they took this equation and got rid of the cosine by taking cosine inverse of both sides. So, 1 half equals the cosine of x is exactly what we have here. So, it's the same set of answers. And this one, some of you were struggling with. And this is where those transformation rules come in. Oop. The sine. Sine starts at 0, goes up, down, and up. And if I pi, 2 pi, it's made a complete cycle. Now, we have this. This is inside, so this works horizontally. Moves everything. Says a half, so it makes it not half, but twice as long, so this would be 4 pi. And now the stuff on the outside, this increases the amplitude of which is normally 1, doubles it, makes it 2, and moves it up 1. So if I move it up 1, Four pi center line is at one and it goes up as high as three and down as low as minus one. Four pi, two pi, pi, three pi.
That's the idea. And that's the review from that course.